to my channel, I'm Sarah. Um, today I thought I'd record my seamstress tag. So if you don't know about it, which I'm sure um, a lot of people in the sewing community already do know about it, um, it was started last year by Holly Dolly. I'll put her um, information in the description box. Um, so it was just a way of getting to know um, bloggers and vloggers in the sewing world. Um, so she came up with a list of questions um, that everybody could answer. Um, I have already done um, a written version of this on my blog, which you can have a look at, um, but I had a couple of requests to do um, a video um, for the seamstress tag, so I thought I'd do that and then you can actually get to see some of the garments that I mention up close. Um, so I've got my list of questions printed out here, so I will go through them. Um, I will firstly start actually by just telling you what I'm wearing. Um, so this is um, one of the um, Sew Over at London um, silk cami tops um, and it's made in um, a really lovely viscose that I bought from a fabric shop in Bristol called Sewn. More about that later. Um, and it's just got a uh, facing uh, on the inside really really lovely to wear really comfortable um and just you know a really nice easy throw on piece uh, and i've also got my high-waisted um ginger jeans which i absolutely love perfect fit straight out the packet so really pleased with them um so i will get on to the questions so number one is who are you well, as I mentioned before, I'm Sarah. Um, I um, I live in Bristol in the UK. I am 40 years old. Yes, I said it. I'm 40 years old. I said it like a big girl. Um, so I turned 40 in November, just gone. Um, and I live with my lovely partner, Alex. Um, he is a um, self-employed singer, songwriter. Um, he's out doing a gig tonight. So that's why I've got the house to myself. Um, and I also live with my beautiful Bengal cat, Jasmine. Now she appeared in the last video, um, but she snuggled up in her bed uh, just down here. Um, so let me just grab her for you. A little complaint. So here she is. This is the beautiful Jasmine again. Hey. Yeah, she's quite happy. She's just had her dinner. So she loves to sit in my sewing room with me and keep me company while I sew. Um, sometimes I put her bed on my on the table so she can sit up there and, and watch me. Um, but pretty much she just has her little bed in the corner of the room and is happy as Larry as long as she's next to me. So I'll pop her back in it now. <laughs> So, um, apart from sewing, um, more about me. So, um, I work as an account manager in uh, the marketing field. Um, I was actually made redundant last August um, from my permanent job. Um, so, I've actually been freelancing ever since, which has been brilliant, actually. <laughs> I've worked pretty much consistently, um, but it means I can kind of work as and when I want. Um, and um, it gives me kind of the the time in the headspace to um to get on with my sewing as well which is lovely so I've kind of been able to do the, the two alongside each other so number two when and why did you start sewing um i sort of i remember doing some hand sewing and that sort of thing when i was little i remember going to a knitting club and things like that um, so I've always been interested in crafts. Um, I chose to do textiles GCSE um, when I was sort of um, 15, 16, um, which I absolutely loved. Um, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of hours in the sewing room. Um, my textiles teacher was called Mrs. Taylor. She was brilliant. Um, and um, I think I, I mentioned it in my, in my uh, blog post. This literally every time I iron um, interfacing on, that smell, it just instantly transports me back there into that room, which is really lovely. Um, my mum was actually a really keen sewer. Um, she wanted to be a designer actually when she was younger. Um, I think that was born out of um, necessity really. She, she was quite slim and couldn't find fashionable clothes to fit her, so she um, decided to make her own. So she has some uh, wonderful things in her wardrobe that she'd made. So I think it was it was great having the kind of um, background knowledge at home uh, and someone that could really teach me. Um, 
but then I kind of didn't sew for quite a few years um, probably only in the last I don't know six or seven years really picked it back up again um, and, and really started enjoying it and making clothes for myself and again part of that was I used to sing in a wedding band and I was looking for kind of 50s um, rockabilly type costumes and I was actually finding um, them really hard to locate on the internet so um, let alone in any stores so I decided to try and make my own um, and then I really really got into sewing and decided right, I'm gonna get a better machine and um, really do this because it's great and, and I found a really lovely community of like-minded sewers on the internet so yeah it all stemmed from there so question three um, what is your favourite or proudest make? Now this one's a fairly recent one. Um, I must admit I saw the pattern first and fell in love with it uh, and then created an occasion around it to to be able to wear the outfit. Um, so for my 40th birthday in November I had a 1920s theme birthday party um, because I had found the beautiful McCall's pattern it's the MZ154 dress um, I think more of as, as a gown so it's this beautiful one with the cut out pieces um, on the top so it's double layered uh, on the top section and so it sort of blouses over the top but it's actually quite structured underneath and then it's got all this beautiful kind of ruched detail uh, it's very long it comes down completely to the ground and then it's got a long train and the piece at the back of it um, just kind of sits underneath your bum um, and gives a really nice shape with, these, with the train coming out at the bottom. Um, I've got some pictures from the night um, but it was quite dark in the venue that we chose um, so we didn't actually get that many great pictures of me wearing the dress but I've got a couple so I'll pop them in um, to the video so you can see those. One day I should do a photo shoot, so you can probably probably see it in the light. One day I'll get round to it. Um, it was meant to be a wearable twirl, um, because I kind of thought, I'm not sure what the fit's gonna be like. Um, I didn't want to go out and buy loads of expensive silk, because there's a lot of fabric in this. I think it's about seven meters or something you need. Um, so I didn't want to go out and spend a fortune if I didn't know the fit was right. Um, but it took so long to make and was so complicated that actually I thought, do you know what, the fabric's fine, I will wear the dress as it is. So maybe if I have the occasion to make it again, um, I may do, and I may make it in a fancy silk now that I know it fits, um, but we will see. I'm certainly not going to do it anytime soon. So that's my favourite make. Um, what is your most disastrous make? I've got a couple of things for this. Um, so I made a coat and I decided to draft my own lining. It didn't have a lining and something went wrong. So I definitely need to just redraw the lining and redo that because it's just sitting there doing nothing because um, I've never finished it. Um, but um, but yes, my Joan dress from So Over It um, looks great from the front. Looks really great from the front. I made it in this beautiful cobalt blue with a bright pink lining and this lovely crepe fabric. Looks great, fits great. When I came to sew the back vent, it was quite tricky. The instructions weren't very clear. Um, anyway, I got round it and, and made it all up. But actually when I'd sewed it, um, just the way it sat on me, it was so high up. I just thought it just didn't look right on me. So I wanted to kind of lengthen that. Um, so I did that and then in doing so I sewed the lining to the shell the wrong way around so that it it just doesn't um, I think I can't remember what the instruction said but you had to kind of turn it a particular way to be able to sew it all together and I just was tired hadn't um, reread the instructions did it wrong so I have never fixed it because I couldn't be bothered to go and unpick it all again. Um, you know, and I, I'm not actually sure because I don't really work in a corporate environment anymore. It's quite casual. I don't think I'm ever really going to wear this dress, even though it's beautiful. Um, but maybe one day I'll get round to finishing that one. We will see. Um, 
where is your favourite place to go fabric shopping? Now, Bristol, despite it being quite a large city, there's really not that much in the way of fabric shops. Um, so you've got a giant fabric land in the middle of town, which is great for kind of cheap and cheerful fabrics. Um, you can find some really lovely things in there, don't get me wrong, you can find great denim in there. Um, the denim for these ginger jeans was bought from there. They don't have a great range of colours, but it's a, it's a good starting point. Um, but recently, um, Marie opened a fabric shop called Sewn. Um, she decided that she wanted to open somewhere that specialised in dressmaking fabrics. Um, and it's wonderful. It's a really, really lovely shop. Um, and actually through that shop, I've met lots of lovely um, sewers in Bristol. Um, and we've got a nice little network now. Um, so yeah, that's great. It's a really, really lovely, lovely place to shop. So what is my most used pattern? You might be able to tell from my first video that I did that I've got a lot of Minetta dresses. I've now got six of them. So this is the Colette Patterns Minetta dress. Um, I've got quite a few of them hanging up here. So that's my red velvet one. I've got a plain blue. We've got a um, sort of patterned floral one. Um, really lovely dress to wear, lovely for work, lovely and casual. Um, but still kind of smart at the same time, really super comfortable, can't say enough nice things about that dress. And I've got quite a few sabeto tops as well from Colette Patterns, um, so yeah they do good work staples for me. Um, my most dreaded sewing task, that involves this bad boy here, my overlocker, threading that, ah oh, my hands get cut to shreds, um, I have never been able to master the cutting cutting the threads off and tying new ones on and having them go through just doesn't work for me. Basically, if you so much as look at it in the wrong direction, it all unravels and it has to be threaded in a very particular order. I know what I'm doing with it, it's just a bit of a pain and as I said, I end up with little scrapes all over my hands whenever I'm doing that. And your favourite sewing task? So, I actually really love top stitching. Um, I find it quite soothing, actually. Um, so I think when I first started doing top stitching I was quite conservative with it and would pick a matching thread so that any dodgy stitching wouldn't show up. But um, I've got to the point now where I'm sort of sewing bright red on um, denim, I'm sewing sort of mustardy gold like classic jeans um, top stitching um, on denim as well so you can see um, the top stitching on here, all quite intricate, love it. Um, so yeah, that is probably my favourite and I do quite like sitting and hand sewing a hem. Um, I find that quite soothing, just kind of put a TV show on and sit and, and hand sew as well. Um, so what is your favourite sewing entertainment? Um, I quite often have my laptop going um, while I'm sitting here sewing. So I, um, I'll stick Netflix on and maybe watch... Um, Gilmore Girls or Nashville or something like that that is sort of quite easy watching that can be on in the background or I'll put Spotify on um, and just have some music playing um, I kind of I can't concentrate too much on something otherwise I get distracted and stop sewing so it just needs to be sort of easy watching or listening in the background I've also joined a choir recently so um, there's been a lot of um, practicing of uh, my choir songs while I'm while I'm sewing so the next question is printed or PDF? Now when I first started sewing, um, PDF patterns weren't really a thing, um, so it was printed all the way. I have always hated the tissue paper dance, of folding it all back up again, um, and of course having a cat, she wants to play and tear it all up. Um, but actually, um, recently I've really got into PDF patterns. I think just the convenience factor of them um, and you can kind of get them done really, really quickly. So I always used to cut my PDF patterns using just a scalpel um, and a cutting mat and, um, and a ruler. But recently I've just bought um, a little guillotine. Um, you actually. So I just bought this guillotine, it's a Fiskars one. Um, and it's absolutely brilliant um, because it's got little guidelines so you can see exactly where you're cutting and it really, really cuts the time down significantly. So, loving that. So, what sewing machine do you use? Um, I've always had Janome machines. Um, I was thinking about changing to a Bonina, um, 
I was looking for a new machine um, for my birthday. My family were really kind and said they'd buy me a machine um, for my 40th. Um, so I, I looked at some Beninas, but actually in doing so, I found the new Janome Atelier range and decided to go for that. So I've got the Atelier 5, which is here. Um, it's such a fancy machine. It's got all sorts of stitches, probably most of which I'll never use. <laughs> but it's it's a really good kind of bridge between you have the kind of fancy expensive quilting embroidery machines um, or you've got your kind of basic machines and they've done a really good range which kind of bridge that gap for people who want a, a bit more from their machine so yeah really really happy with that um, I've still got my old Janome um, which is uh, the DC 3050 um, still works brilliantly and if I'm doing something like making jeans or something where it needs top, top stitching um, I will have the three machines lined up so I can kind of work in production. Um, I've also got um, the Janome uh, 9200D um, overlocker which is a great machine actually really pleased with that it's it's sort of the, um, the basic range that and you know me do um but yeah it, it works brilliantly it's quite a small machine so it doesn't take up that much space um although i was quite tempted by the baby lock overlockers and cover stitch machines um when i went to the knitting stitching show they are absolutely great i saw the demo and um, so one day one day i will save up and they've got um air threading um so you don't have to do all the um fancy <laughs> threading that this one takes so yes I will definitely be keeping my eye on that um, and the last question is do you have any other hobbies um, yes I do um, I find time to sing so as I said I sing in a choir at the moment um, I also sing in various bands I've got a kind of country trio I've um, sung in wedding bands all sorts of things um, I do a bit of yoga occasionally, um, I love reading, um, I only tend to find time to read on holiday though at the moment, um, but pretty much my main hobby is worshipping the cat. Um, we spend a lot of time together, um, I think I mentioned in my last video she's going to be 17 in April, um, so um, we've been together for a long time um, and she's very adorable, she's got a, got a great personality, so we spend a lot of time together. Um, so yeah, if that's a hobby, yeah, my cat is my hobby. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's it for this video. I'm sorry if it was a bit rambly and long, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, so that you can get up-to-date content from me. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.